It's the middle weekend of the Six Nations and the first game up was Ireland versus Wales. A game most people thought would be a walk in the park for Ireland. Um, welcome back to our Six Nations series. We're going to be here throughout the Championship and beyond. So hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on that. We've got Elko here in green, ready to discuss this Ireland-Wales game. How are you, mate? ATT, I'm good, thank you. Yep, had a few beers, watched the game. Happy days. <laughs> okay, overall thoughts. How happy do you think the Irish are going to be uh, based on this victory? Hmm, mixed. I think mixed. I think um, I think there'll be it will be an interesting video review. Um, first half, particularly, I think they forced a lot. Um, didn't play how I thought they were going to be. Uh, although, I mean. We said um, the other day that they would play a possession game, and they certainly did that. They starved Wales of any ball in the first half. It was embarrassing. It was like a training run. Um, and then kind of kicked very loosely at the beginning of the second half. And that wily Welsh team who will never, ever give up um, and have huge quality uh, and fight in them um, gave them a bit of a scare for about 25 minutes, 30 minutes into the second half. So mixed. I've got mixed feelings. I'm obviously delighted with a win. Um, as as you would be home win, um, but it sets up the the last two weeks quite nicely. It does indeed. Let's start before the kickoff because there was some emotion in the anthems today. I saw Ty Furlong was was literally bawling his eyes out. Any is he normally like chopping that? onions? Chopping <laughs> onions, mate. No, he is, to be fair, he is. He is. He is normally like that. Um, he he does. He does like you know. Whatever Farrell does within that camp, he finds ways of motivating the team, which is always a difficult thing, right? Um, particularly when you're you're winning quite a lot, right? So, um, you know, they have they often have people coming into camp um, during the weeks beforehand, and they've, they you know, they do little things like the like the anthem la the, the last time they were out with the young kid playing. But um, yeah, I, I don't know if there's any personal story behind, that, but he he normally is quite quite honest. Um, but uh, yeah, I. I you know, interesting. My my, my uh, pal was was at the game today, and there was a common theme in this in in the home nations. At the moment is, is about the atmospheres within the the grounds, and he said it was very flat at times, which seems to be a thing that's uh, going around at the moment. It does indeed, and that flatness was probably not helped by an opening sort of period of play where Ireland just seemed to be slightly off. Uh, they were making handling errors, which you almost never see. They lost the odd line out, which you almost never see. And some of their line out possession that they did win was was a bit sloppy and a bit scrappy. So it led to um, Wales, you know, defending wave on wave of Irish attack and doing it very well, I would say. I'd say they moved off the block of runners and hit the person behind repeatedly. And although they never... They didn't really get on top as a defensive side. You know, they weren't smashing people back and nailing turnovers as a result, but they defended really well, I thought, in those opening phases, for sure. They did, and they had to, because they had no ball, right? It was it was devastating how much, how Ireland were able to keep ball. Um, I, I think if 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 you look at um, other, other teams, there... Ireland are streets ahead in terms of retention. It's just incredible to watch, and and I I'd, I'd, I'd ask people to look just look at how they re, you know regenerate the ball every time they're able to keep the ball. It's it's unbelievable and kept Rafael out of the game superbly well. Who we who we thought I mean he got he got a few in the second half, got a lot more bites out of because the play was more broken. Um and yeah, I mean it, it's it's an interesting one because. They did struggle with the line-out, but they also had so many line-outs in the first 20 minutes. It's just, you, you start to almost you kind of run out of stuff. And I frankly think that they were way overthinking this. Um, I think if they had have just gone basic, win the ball at the front, win the ball at four, uh, and also within, in terms of what they were doing in the back line and open play was, you know, just give it to Bundy and run. He was getting gain line every time he ran at Costello and every time he ran at um, Tompkins at 12, he got gain line. He was, it was just a different level of physicality. But they 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 were trying to be very intricate with passes and, and forcing that last pass, which gave turnover. And it was very frustrating watching because I, 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 I had said we'd get the bonus point by halftime and they should have got the bonus point by halftime. They should have been 30 nil up, frankly. Um, but Wales kept in it. I do think... 
I was watching uh, what after the after this game, watching the next one. But I was thinking about. I have a feeling there was a little bit of pre-England preparation within what they were doing. That little wrap around they were doing, which just looks quite new, which was giving them extra things. I'm just wondering, are they preparing for a blitz defence in two weeks' time? But I might be wrong. Interesting, interesting. We will, we will see. Um, the thing about Wales moving off, uh, off the blocker line and then defending that really well. Interestingly, former podcast guest at the Rugby Trainer did a video this week with Sam Warburton talking about that, yeah. that exact thing. And yeah. I thought Wales was, I don't know if Sam's been in camp with Wales this week or, or whatever, but yeah. they did it so, so well. So I thought that was super impressive. Go and follow the rugby trainer if you aren't already. Um, and then the other thing that happened early in this game was Wales defended a, a five-meter driving line out really well as well and got a turnover at that. And I was at this point, I was thinking, right, they're doing everything right here. You know, they're, they're sticking in the game. Their, their tackles are, are landing. My only slight concern for Wales was that Ireland always seemed to be able to get onto a shoulder and make a little bit of ground, even though they weren't really flowing. They always seemed to find a soft edge somehow. And I thought that might add up over the game. Um, it didn't really, actually, really in the end. Um, but what did come into play in the first half which is something that we've maybe thought might have been one of Ireland's minor weaknesses was the scrum. And Andrew Porter was dominant, absolutely dominant in that first half. Yeah, a referee that likes him, um, <laughs> I think. Uh, and some some magical um, uh, blindside uh, flanker captaincy play, which I know you picked up on on your, your social media where... <laughs> Where, Port, where Porter's elbow was pointing down and, and Manny was pushing it up. I've never seen that before and it was absolutely brilliant. But he was also the whole time looking at that the, that assistant referee touch judge, sort of saying, you know, but he, we, we were, I mean, Ireland were proper on it in the scrum. You could see, uh, it, it, and, and I think what the picture they were, sh- we were showing was that the, it wasn't just Porter walking around, which he did. But it was the initial push, all three together, and that snap, which Fogarty's got them doing, is showing the right pictures, I think. And, and Wales really struggled, struggled to, to to combat that. Um, and we got a lot, we got a lot of joy out of that, didn't we? And you know that classic of Furlong, which they showed the replay where they won a, uh, they got a free kick, um, and he straight away went. Scrum, scrum, and again, that's what I'm saying to referee. I'm saying to referee, look, we got these guys on toast, right? Yeah, and they did. As the righty on the tight head, I think got quite long, and he also he was angled in a little bit, and that can work. That can work as a tight head, um, because the looser then, you know, it gets very tempted to get your head in and under, and then it very much looks like you're driving across. I think Porter did a great job to just scrummage more with his right hand side and stay square. And and did well there. I yeah. I thought it was a very impressive first half from him. Yeah, he was excellent. He he was he was really good. And I'm I'm glad to see that uh, may, maybe that uh, um, view of referees is slightly changing. We'll we'll see in a few weeks. <laughs> One other incident during this phase of play that I want to talk about as well. There was um there was a brilliant tackle by Gareth Thomas, the uh, Welsh loose head, which. You know, it was such a chop tackle. It was on McCarthy, I think, which Huge. led, yeah, which led to a referral turnover. And those turnovers don't happen as often if, it, like, it's a big drag tackle where somebody's not chopped to the ground. But you get a chop tackle like that, the guy hits the ground, referral was on it immediately. It was a rare opportunity to win a turnover against Ireland. And I, I think the tackle was the key point of that. Yeah, and, and this is the key because, because this is where that's the only way you can stop Ireland is by stopping them on or behind the gain line. Because if they get behind you, you're in big trouble because they were pointing this out in, in um, I think O'Driscoll was talking about it. It's like, or, or actually it was um, Math, um, Phillips, um, the Welsh centre in, 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 in the punditry at half time was like, you're not only, you're not only kind of, uh, as a defender running, you're folding around, you're have, you're folding backwards, which is even harder. You're having to run around the rook and you're, you're never, it's a domino effect. You're never in place. Whereas if you can get a dominant tackle in front, it, it makes, and it allows your scavengers to get in and get the ball, but it also allows your guys to fold much quicker and get into play. And that's, <coughs> they had Ireland a few times, not a lot, few times but you know again it's a blueprint for for England and Scotland uh, in the in the final two rounds of you've got to stop them on gain line 
but that means putting your body on the line. Um, and um, the problem I think that a lot of defensive teams have with Ireland is that they don't, their runners don't just run and allow themselves to be hit on the gain line. They have footwork and McCarthy slightly didn't get it right there, but um, it was a great hit, huge hit. Yeah. Ireland did get it right though later in that first half with waves and waves and waves of attack doing exactly what Ireland liked to do, it, which ended up with James Lowe getting over in the corner from a great pass mm. actually. I think it was Nash, wasn't it? The last Nash, pass, yeah. which, you know, it was there was definitely a chance that he might have scored himself if he went, but for him to recognise that the last guy had stepped in, get his hands up and over, just to leave Lowe with a catch and dot down was, was excellent. Yeah, great confidence in their skills, you know, and um it, it it there was a few that didn't happen and but they but the fact that they're even trying that and the confidence they have in their in their skill set is that's that's what I think this team's all about is they're they're pushing the boundaries and um if if it, it, it kind of it 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 stalled them a little bit. As I said, I, I think they should have been more direct in the first half and done that in the second half. But they were, you know, you, you can't fault that you know, if they if they want to be as good and renowned as a New Zealand team, that's what, you know, you only have to look at the opening weekend of the Super Rugby this weekend of some of the stuff we're seeing, the offloads and everything else. You've got to push the boundaries, right? You've got to go for it. So I think they've got to back their skills. And Nash, again, today, I thought he was excellent. Yeah. And then around about the 35th minute, Wales had the ball in their hands and they were running with it. And I suddenly thought, they haven't done that at all this half yet. They didn't have the ball, let alone in any kind of advantageous position. It was 35th minute before they had any phase play whatsoever. And, like, that is just absurd, like, domination in terms of territory and possession from one team. And the, But Wales actually did look quite lively. They did actually look like they might be able to cause some damage. And for a second, I thought they might get a score before half-time, which would have, you know, potentially mentally got into, into heads a little bit. But they didn't, sadly. No, they, I mean, at times it was like a training run. It was, they just could not get any ball. It was, and, and that must be mentally extremely difficult to kind of deal with. Um, but you're right, they got, I th- there was a stat at one stage where uh, Darcy said it on ITV was Wales had had 3% of possession within the, the strike zone. So within 22, 10 meter 20, which is crazy for a whole, like, I mean, your head must be wrecked. And they just seemed to get turned over every time they got a little break. Some, you know, Bundy was immense, and uh, not only in, in in attack, but then on the, on the second phase of attack where he was going in as either second man to 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 get a turnover and and get his hands on. He was he was immense, and you just felt that they just could not get a break. <laughs> they just couldn't. Every time they got a little bit of ball, they turn over, and then Ireland would keep 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 keep, um, and either score or get or not, and. But I mean, as a like, I gotta say, I was I was worried that um, there was another game recently, <laughs> the French game, where you know you're playing in that t- in that game they were playing so well, and, and Wales were still in it, you know, and and you're thinking, hang on, we've absolutely dominated, but we have not taken the opportunities that we probably should have. I think I think we I think Manny was right in in the penalties he he chose to go for corner or let let uh, Crowley kick to go. Um, but it was, it was, they were still in it and they should have been, that's that, the only thing that's annoying me is a New Zealand team would have, uh, you know, top New Zealand team would have put 30, 40 on that Welsh team in the first half. That's yeah. a worry. <clears throat> it is a worry, but I think Ireland have scored at, at that rate previously in those situations. I think it, it was just a little bit off today and they didn't quite get it. I wouldn't, but to mm. me, I wouldn't be too worried. Um, <laughs> <laughs> into the second half. And Wales actually carried on how they ended the first, actually, and got some territory, got some possession, and ended up with a penalty try after Ty Burns slid up the side of a mall, and he got yellow carded as well. It's now 17-7. Wales have been so competitive. You know, they fought for everything. Now they got a lot, like a little glint of light into this game. And like I felt like it was really game on at this point, you know, because the demons will start coming in for Ireland have we wasted all that territory and possession in the first half? Yeah. Man down, it's back to within 10 points, you know. And Wales did sort of do okay over the next 10 minutes, but crucially, they couldn't get another score in that time. No, 100%. <laughs> I was like, 
opening cans at a much faster rate than I would have liked to, because you're like, hang on. So, and, and the worst thing was almost like, I can imagine that the Irish half time was like, look guys, you've got to tighten this up and let's, let's like kind of, you know, um, let's, let's not be too loose. And then what happens? Wales kick off weird uh, mall thing happens and burn just uh, just comes out with his blue scrum cap from nowhere and he's up the pitch and I'm like oh my god broken play broken play then it was kicking kicking I'm like no stop then there was a bit where there was a knock on that Wales made a knock on and I'm like uh, stop playing take the scrum you need to you just everyone calm down and they're like no no Gibson Park's playing it off playing it off I'm like, and then they lose the advantage I'm like no no it's, they just need to kind of and then Wales scored um, the, the penalty try and, and rightfully so actually I, I think uh, Byrne was <laughs> that was definitely yellow um, and I was like yeah as an Irish fan I was like guys just kind of I think that's why Farrell made some changes earlier than maybe he would have done I think it was a line out and all of a sudden it was like five six guys guys came on um, but I'll tell you what Wales can pick and go my god like they had Ireland on the absolute rack and Ireland were giving away penalties and penalties. And again, blueprint, blueprint for the teams coming up. You know, uh, it, when you get into that zone, you just pick and go and you put your body on the line and you keep going. And Ireland struggles, really, really struggle with that. Yeah. During that five minute period of play, which was hectic, I think it was about five minutes of constant ball yeah. play. Um, yeah. Right at the start of that, uh, Gareth Thomas lost, lost his left boot. Andrew Porter threw it. Oh, it was him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Threw it beyond the halfway line. So I think Gareth Thomas played that entire like period of play without a boot on as well, which was just I so love I love bits like that. It's amazing. Yeah, because I was trying to spot who it was, and then because there was someone injured, and then I thought maybe one of the physios because because they've gone off so so long. Normally you see a player kind of go and get it, but there hadn't been a break and play in that long. <laughs> so it was a scrum half. Had, oh my god, that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, so funny. Um, interestingly, then, though, the, the game has been kind of hectic. You know, there's been not too much kicking, really. But then it kind of got to the point where everybody understood that the game was in the period where it was going to be decided. And for the first time, this was around sort of the 65th minute or something, yeah. there was actually quite an elongated kicking battle for the first yeah. time for a while, which I thought was, I don't know, you get to that point, don't you? And you just suddenly get nervous about losing the game or, or not being in a position to win it. It happened in the Scotland France game as well. Yeah. And it's just then the game's there to be won. And Ireland eventually got possession in the right field play, uh, field area. And Frawley got over for a very good try. Lovely line that he ran. Yeah, it was like, I think it was like, it, was, it seemed to be 17 7 for quite a long, it was 17 mm-hmm. 7 um, for quite a long time. And then that kick tennis happened and it was. You know, I, I'm sure the messaging was coming on to just also, I think the Ireland players kind of know that they probably need to be just settling stuff down and they're ahead. Let's put the pressure on them. Why are we, why are we taking risks when actually all we need is a, an entry here and then a kick to the corner and, and a, and a line out. Um, but yeah, it settled down and um, yeah, Frawley, Frawley scored a, a nice try. I've got to say, I was so super impressed with him. I think he is absolutely the real deal. I'm, that kid is, he, he looks so, it's like he played 50 tests. He is so good. He's got so much time and they've got to find a way of getting him on the pitch. Um, I don't think full back's the right thing. Um, maybe 12 at some stage, d- depending on what they're doing with, 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 with Aki. But he is, he's an exceptionally good, good quality player. Um, we're, we're blessed in Ireland with some unbelievable guys. Yeah, he looked so composed is just how I feel about his performance. He just looked totally in control of everything yeah. that he was doing. And on, on his try, if you get to watch it again, Dyer, Dyer, the Welsh winger, was the guy that was opposite him. He got, he, bless him, he got it completely wrong. And he ended up running almost <laughs> completely around the post because the post was in his way. Um, but it, it kind of looked quite funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but as, as the game then, it kind of it kind of felt like that broke the game. Just over 10 minutes to go, 24-7. And Wales started falling off a few tackles that they hadn't done earlier in the game. But it wasn't until the like the very last play that Byrne got over for the bonus point try, which I think Ireland definitely deserved in the end. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I think we should have had the bonus point in the first half. 
Um, but credit to Wales and and um, there's some good stuff in that Welsh team. I have to say that there, uh, you know, there, there's there's some good individuals and and some of the team play was was excellent. But um, yeah, I, I, what I was really delighted about was you know seeing that clock in red and I flash back to New Zealand in the quarterfinals and you know we did it this time. We we kept going exactly the same area of the pitch where we got turned over against New Zealand and and we 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 kept going and I think they'll take a lot out of that. Um, to you know, that it was a probably three minutes maybe of of play, and I would have, I, I think they would have been very disappointed if they hadn't got a bonus point because you know they they, they were they were different different class. Um, and um, yeah, Byrne finished off nice line to to score on, under the post. Good finish. It was a very good finish indeed. There's a couple couple more players I want to pick out on the Welsh side. One for good reasons, the other not so much. Uh, I thought Dylan Lewis came on at tight head and really shored up the scrum. Andrew Porter got subbed very soon afterwards. You know, his time yeah. was probably up anyway, but Dylan Lewis came in and really solidified things there. But then also Will Rowlands came on. I thought he looked really off the pace. You know, sometimes it takes a while to get up to, sp- up to the speed of a game when you come on. And I know he hasn't played a lot recently, um, but he looked, he looked just off it to me. Like he looked mm. a percentage point just off. And in these types of games... You know, that's a that's a half line break which leads to an offload and all these kind of things. So, you know, I think he'll probably want to pick things up next game. Yeah, and I guess it's looking at the prep there and why, you know, they'll need to review why is that. And as a former SNC coach, you probably look at that and go, what, well, you know, should we have got him ready earlier? Maybe he went on without knowing he was going on or something like that. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think he was. I agree with you. He seemed um, a bit spaced and and on on a different time zone completely. Um, if I'm going to, I have to say, I was uh, you know speaking about Frawley, but um, again, <laughs> today was I was looking at both teams and I was thinking, geez, you know, well, only a few weeks ago we were talking about you know what are Wales going to do without bigger and what are Ireland going to do without Sexton and. You know, Coslo was like, yeah, yeah, you just, I just look as an old bloke watching these play. It's like these kids have got no fear. He was really, really good again. And, and you know, Wales are okay. They're going to be all right, you know. And, and then they've got Lloyd coming on as well. And then with Ireland, you've got Crowley, who is growing into that jersey. I thought his kicking, I, I was really critical of his kicking from the tee. He was absolutely flawless. I mean, he was banging them. He was striking it so well. The, the first kick he had that, that man, man he gave him. Where they could have gone to touch, said no, have a go from ten, uh, from uh, 40, 45 meters, and this the strike was boom, low, hard, bang, and he and he continued that trend. Touch kicks, you know, some good, some bad, but it, it's coming. But he's he's settling in and, and and not going off piece as much, but still injecting his clear class into into some of the plays. So I was really pleased with with both tens, I think today, but particularly Crowley and really happy how he's. Um, I'm I'm really glad that uh, Farrell decided to keep with him and not panic and put him to 15 and bring bring Byrne in. So really good. Yeah. While we're talking about kicking, I, I did a video last week about James Lowe's left boot. And in it, I said, I couldn't remember a time when he even like mishit one at all. The very first kick he had today, he kind of like half miss sliced it a little bit and it didn't get to the halfway line, which normally, you know, they're getting to the 22. It wasn't a bad kick, really, but it wasn't as perfect as he normally is. Um, so, yeah, you know. They're, they're he must out. have watched it, TT. He must have watched us <laughs> getting cocky. Um, yeah. And, and one other player on the Welsh side as well I want to pick out is, is Winnet, the fullback. And just oh. talking about confidence. I mean, the kid, again, you know, similar to how you spoke about Frawley, he looks like he's got 50 caps. Like, he's just yeah. absolutely fearless. And he, he won so many good balls in the air today. Absolute live wire on the on the ground as well. I thought I just think he's an excellent player. He's a great player. I think I think I think Low kicked and chased up, and uh, he had the confidence to just <laughs> to step low and make him look silly. And yeah, he's he's one. He's really. I he, he, I couldn't believe how small when they were standing in the in, before coming out into the Aviva. Um, and I mean, you've, you've got to say the Welsh guys look so young. Like the captain looks. He looks like he's in college, and and then when then Winnet was there, and he's like, it's almost like Casey, but even younger than Casey. But Jesus, he's you know he he's got no fear, uh, and he can he can do some magic, you know. And it, 
as I said, as we said in the preview for this, like you can see that there's there's huge potential in this Welsh team. Um, and um, over the next few years, it's 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 really good. It's going to be very exciting for for the Welsh fans. Yeah, just summing up on Ireland from my point of view, I think you know they'll look at items in the in the performance, and and there's lots to work on. But I think good teams can win ugly as well. You're not going to get the perfect performance every time, as much as you want. And to get a bonus point against an incredibly physical and and very detail oriented Welsh team today, I think they'll be happy with that. You know, lots to work on, but a four point win. Good stuff. Yeah, I mean, listen, to get... <laughs> I was kind of thinking, oh, imagine doing another shutout. Like two two weeks or two two Six Nations games in a row where you don't concede one point. I mean, it's unheard of. It's like ridiculous. So, no, I think I think they'll be they'll be happy enough um, uh, g- going in. There's, it, it, it could have been... If they had had the like you know the hundred percent game where nothing was wrong, then what do you do with that? So actually, they've got lots to work on. They've got a fallow week, which we both you and I not too sure about, and I'd rather they were playing England next week. But um, yeah, they, they'll be they'll be better and sharpened and and uh, be prepared for this rush defence that's going to come. Yeah, well, that second fallow week, by the way, is getting taken away either next championship or the one after. I'm not sure which. So we've only got a you know, live with it for a couple of times. Yeah, I, I, if, if there's going to be a fallow week, I think there should be one. Yeah. And I think it should be between the last weekend and the final weekend. <laughs> because then that'd be great, wouldn't it? Because that will build, that will build the buzz and everything else. People What's will be like, like, oh, we haven't had a week. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be cool. And then also both teams will have a week, an extra week to prepare. But this thing in the middle, is, it doesn't, I don't like it. Yeah, fair enough. People at home, that's what we think. That's where we think the game was won or lost. That's where we think about the performances of each team and lots of individuals within it. Is there anything we missed? Anything you disagree with? We'd love to hear from you. Let's have it in the comments down below and we'll join you there for a good old chinwag. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it, which is good for everybody. Elko, thanks so much for your time today and well done, Ireland. Thanks, buddy. See you tomorrow for the big game. <laughs> people at home you can subscribe there you can watch that one next and don't forget to get out and play